Films TV præsenteres i samarbejde med Solid. This is private property. You are not authorized to be here. I put those guns down now if I were you. Stand down. All right, now. We're good. We're good. Yeah. I denne uge er det biografpremiere på det længe ventede Robocop remake. Genindspilningen af Paul Verhoeven's sci-fi klassiker fra 1987, hvor Peter Weller spillede politibetjenten Alex Murphy, der blev slået ihjel i tjenesten, men som blev genfødt som Robocop, der er halvt menneske, halvt maskine og 100% superbetjent. Robocop, the future of law enforcement. I den nye film spilles Robocop af svenske Joel Kinnaman, der ledsages af store navne som Gary Oldman, Samuel L. Jackson, Michael Keaton og ikke mindst Jackie Earl Haley, som vi har interviewet. Haley er nok bedst kendt for sin indsats i Watchmen, hvor han spillede den maskerede hævner Rorschach, mens han i 2010 spillede den morderiske Freddy Krueger i remaket af A Nightmare on Elm Street. Og i Robocop spiller Haley soldaten Rick Maddox, der har til opgave at gøre Robocop til en toptrænet dræbermaskine. Alex, listen to me. The EM 208s will try to maneuver you, so Maddox can get a clear shot. Do not let that happen. If Maddox hits you, everything but your life support will shut down. You'll feel more pain than you've ever felt in your life. I don't know about that. I've been through a lot. <laughs> All right, I say we go in three. Three. You know, it's a sci-fi actioner, but it's very intelligent, it's topical. You know, I think it's, it's relevant. Um, I think it relates to a lot of what's going on today with privatization. Our things are just kind of getting out of hand. You know, it's kind of a, I think the original Robocop was awesome, and I think uh, this film has a lot of the same elements. And uh, it should be just a really cool kind of update and a, and a slightly different slant on it. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know if it's as satirical, but um, I think a lot of the elements are, are still there. Like kind of like what I said before, you know, it's a, it's a very smart, you know, sci-fi actioner. And um, I think that's great when you can take those wonderful, entertaining elements, but yet still have it be, you know, smart and, and speak to kind of what's going on today, you know. We need to give Americans a product they can love, a figure they can rally behind. We can't put a machine on the street. Forget machines. They want a product with a conscience. Something that knows what it feels like to be human. I'll give you mom a kiss. Hi, baby. Too slow, boy. We're gonna put a man inside a machine. I, I've never had anything particularly against the, the, the process of rebooting or remaking because I've always felt that it's sort of like what we've done with classical music for centuries. I mean, you can find a billion different interpretations of Beethoven's Fifth, for example. So I'm personally always interested in seeing how movies can do something new based on, uh, at its core, uh, the same blueprint. And, and you've done, of course, you've, you've worked on A Diamond on the Elm Street and Dark Shadows, sort of remakes and reboots. Do you have any feelings about the practice yourself? Well, I myself... Uh, I love it because I, I think you take something like Robocop, which is a great film, but it's it's also kind of a little dated now. It looks a little dated, the, you know, with the graphics and just the whole the lighting, um, you know, even the, the, the screenwriting. Um, things have, have evolved and changed, and I think um, this is a wonderful uh, film to to redo just based on, uh, you know, the, the crews are better. Um, Uh, graphics are, are, are much more uh, better than they were in the 80s. I think they were in the, in the first Robocop, I think it was like stop animation that they were doing. But yeah, I, th I think this is a great one to, to redo. You know, one of the, the the differences, of course, in between the two movies is your character Maddox, because he's totally new. He wasn't in, in the original. Uh, what, what sort of guy is he? Basically, you know, uh, Omnicorp is, is policing the world. Maddox uh, goes on these missions, and they'll have several hundred 208s and 209s, and they'll be scanning uh, buildings and scanning people and eliminating threats. 
and crime has really gone down. So Maddox is in charge of that. But the problem here in the states is they're not allowing that because they don't want to, the Congress doesn't want to give that kind of power to a robot to make those kind of decisions. So uh, when they decide to put a man into the system, Maddox is, 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 is training a RoboCop. But he's not really kind of happy with the idea of putting a man into the robot because he knows what his 208s and 209s are going to do with any given stimuli. You put a man into the system, Maddox, you know, kind of thinks that that's going to create a problem. But he's still doing his best to do his job to train RoboCop. Did you have to undergo any, any military training yourself? I mean, because, I mean, I know you already have a black belt and you've done fighting the foreign films, so I guess you were already well prepared. Yeah, I was pretty well prepared. I definitely studied with the armory guys, you know, working with the guns and stuff to just kind of get more familiar with them. But, I'm, I'm, but I live in Texas, so it's not like I didn't know anything about the guns. <laughs> A lot of this has been made about the film's PG-13 rating. Now, now you, like you say, you haven't seen the finished film yet, but did you have any sense yourself doing the making of the film that stuff had to be like toned down for, for, for the film? No, not really. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't really sense that when we were working on it. Cool, cool. And of course, we all know Joel Kinnaman very well here in Scandinavia because of the films he's done in Sweden, like Snap a Cash, Easy Money, which is a, a, a great little taut Swedish uh, thriller. But this is so beyond everything he's done before in terms of size and scope. So I'd love to hear what you what your impressions were of, of him. Well, I I saw him uh, in The Killing, and I really liked that show, and he was my favorite part of the show. And when I heard that he was hired to play RoboCop, I thought, perfect. You know, he's just a, uh, he's a really good actor. Um, I think he, you know, I, again, I haven't seen the film, but everything I was seeing on the set, I think the guy is awesome. And so I was, it was really fun working with him. He's a super nice guy. When we last spoke in 2010, Watchmen had come out not that long ago and had only been a, a modest financial success, even though a lot of people loved it. But its popularity just seems to be growing all the time. Has there been any talk at all about a sequel or prequel? And would you be up for donning Rorschach's mask again? You know, there has been, uh, there has been no talk that I know of to do a sequel. And I'll tell you, playing Rorschach was one of the most um, fulfilling roles that you know that I've ever played and um, you know that the, the trick with with that that movie it really would be tough to kind of do a sequel just because it's so it's so, uh, so revered you know but I, I still love doing it det var alt for denne gang på Films TV, men vi er allerede tilbage igen senere på ugen med et kort kig på RoboCop franchisens historie på gensyn Husk, at du kan finde alle vores tidligere Films TV-udsendelser på Films under Films TV-fanebladet og også på videovideo.dk, i iTunes og via vores gratis Video Video-app.